welcome in. All right, so bias when you are doing your surveys, okay? So in statistics, okay, when you're studying kind of probably in grade 12 or at some point very early on, you might run into um, understanding that um, bias does exist. Now, what is this uh, survey bias? Well, the goal ultimately is to uh, take a, a sample that might properly represent the entire population uh, for a given question. Now, uh, as soon as you do not reflect the population, you're gonna have some kind of a bias. Now, that bias can be in the way that you're collecting your data. So maybe you're using a sampling technique um, which is non-random, okay? And it is actually a, a biased in some way. Now I covered sampling techniques, okay? I'll put up a link up above there if you are interested. Now you may also get bias in the way that you are trying to measure. So it can happen that the way that you word your question can lead to misguided results. And of course, you may get responses from your um, sample that are actually biased where people are not really honest with the, the answer themselves or um, they just choose not to actually provide responses at all. And then you might be not representing the entire population because you maybe you're missing a group from the population. So the entire uh, goal is to have as much um, objective as possible. Now, it's really hard to do that uh, in any surveys that you do or any statistical collection of data and measurements and responses. So I'm certainly not an expert in it, but I do know and I have kind of studied, at least on the academic side, you know, a few biases that occur. So here are some things to keep in mind, okay? So there's four different biases that you may study at some point. The simplest one is having a sampling bias. This is where your sampling technique is actually not random. And if you do study your sampling technique, so the, the link that I provided there, you'll notice that it's actually kind of hard to come up with a sampling that is very random. Now, why is it hard? Because of the fact that you may you know, need a lot of time to collect that data. You may need actually money because to do it properly, let's say if you're doing it for a population which is maybe the entire country or the entire province or state, okay, or even city, it's very hard to try to ca uh, gather all the collection of data in a, in a random way. It, it might be very costly. So a sampling bias where the sampling technique is not random happens quite often. I'll try to give an example of that in just a moment. Another um, kind of a bias that you have within surveys is called a non-response uh, bias. This is where a group is underrepresented, okay, by simply not responding. So you may create a question where um, the people that you're collecting the uh, data from simply just are not interested in that particular question and they may not respond. So it will sway the data into those that might be interested in the item and they might leave out okay, other um, groups that may not be represented uh, properly. So sometimes this is done, unfortunately, maybe in media, especially by kind of activists or lobbyists uh, purposely where they want a certain viewpoint to be taken and saying that this now captures the entire population, but it doesn't. It's, it's biased swayed towards certain groups. Okay, the third bias is the measurement bias. Um, so this one is nothing to do with the actual data collection or missing data. It is more the way that a characteristic of the variable that you're trying to measure is either under or overestimated. And I'll try to give an example of this. And you can do this in kind of several different ways. A, the way that you word the question uh, is kind of most common, okay, in terms of the measuring uh, bias. So this focuses on the characteristic of the variable that you want to get a grasp on. 
Now, the last one, which is the response bias. Um, so participants uh, provide misguided answers. So this is done on purpose. So they will create a bias in your survey collection uh, because they're not being honest. So this one is, uh, again, easy to understand, okay? Especially the non-response bias and then the response bias where it's misguided. So those two are rather easy to, to be able to understand for us, but they're very difficult to be able to see if these are true or not, because how do you take the participants and um, know that they're providing you misguided answers? So that's actually difficult. So the goal of this video is just to let you know that these biases exist and to let you know that when you are looking at statistical data, you know, if you're looking in newspapers, if you're looking even in research papers and so on, you have to be mindful of you know how to spot these biases and you know don't take them at face value which a lot of lobbyists and activists for example they want you to um, think that these are true and then they will tailor it towards politicians to for example pass certain bills or give certain rights but they're not actually representing the entire population right so here are some examples okay um, that kind of I wrote down and I'm going to try to uh, let you know, you know, why there's a bias and then what maybe kind of a bias it might be. So the first one, it says a technology company wants to know what proportion of the population owns a smartwatch. So I actually don't own one. But um, what it does is the company surveys its own workers. Now, you know, what bias would kind of be represented if you want or if this company wants the entire population, then certainly there would be a bias. Well, A, they are a technology company. So let's say if it was Apple and it was just serving their, their own members or maybe Google or something like that, you would figure that a lot of their workers are already into technology. So the results you might obtain, I'm not saying that everybody would have a smartwatch, but maybe a higher proportion of the population or at least the sample within that company would have a smartwatch and it would give a wrong result for the entire population. So this would be kind of a sampling bias. So the technique that you use okay, within, it wasn't actually fully random because you're just interested in your company. Now, if you wanted to know within the members of your own company, if, of your own um, kind of group that you are in, you know, how many people have a smartwatch, then that's different. But if you want it over overall population, then you have to be careful how you would create that survey and where you would collect that data from. So this would have a sampling bias for sure, okay, um, within this. Now, uh, the second question, okay, it says a, uh, a question on a survey is posed and it says, who is the greatest basketball player? Now I wrote this, so this is actually my own personal bias. But if this was asked, let's say if it's on a website or maybe you know a sports magazine or something like that, and it says A, Michael Jordan, you know, B, Kobe Bryant, C, LeBron James, D, other. So um, now many people might agree, you know, that Michael Jordan was maybe the greatest player of all time, or LeBron James, and so on. But there is a bias here. So this question, it also kind of, you can think about it, is, okay, it's a leading question. So we would, we would call this a leading question because it leads you. So this is a leading question. It leads you in a particular direction and sways your result towards these three basketball players. So you almost kind of anchor yourself to these. Now, if they were asked, you know, who's the, who's the best player from these three, great. But if you want, you know, the greatest basketball player of all time, you know, basketball players, you can go f much further back than just Michael Jordan. And I'm sure that there's many others that people disagree, okay, that it's just these three. So it's almost like you can leave a blank to make it, you know, not as biased, okay, and not lead, okay, not provide a leading question so that it sways people to vote in a particular way. Okay, so this is actually uh, a measurement bias. So this is one of these, okay, where you are um, 
taking on a characteristic, so, you know, kind of the greatest player that you would have, and then you're, you know, underestimating, okay, because of the fact, okay, or overestimating, so in terms of, so you're underestimating the fact that you're leaving out a lot of other players, although you do have other, but it does lead, okay, most people to think of those three players I mentioned. And then you're overestimating in the sense that, you know, you might have a bigger proportion towards, you know, Jordan and Kobe Bryant and so on, and LeBron James. And so from those players, you know, they might get a bigger proportion of people thinking that they're the greatest basketball player than if you just left things blank. So this is kind of a question within the survey that um, does create some bias. Now, here's another one. Um, so it says a question on a survey again is posed and it says, are you in favor of the government enforcing the COVID-19 vaccine, which in many countries um, it has been done at least for, for a while. So, um, you know, does this have a bias in some way? This is actually uh, called a loading question. So loading question means that you are you know, maybe if this is, you know, in the newspaper, they're loading it because they're um, creating, you know, if, if the question itself was, you know, if you were given what the possible complications might be from a vaccine, and then you'll say, you know, uh, and you're only interested in, in if people would take the vaccine or not, you leave the government completely out of it. Um, so that would be a little bit different. Here you're loading the question with kind of the government enforcing this, which makes this very political. So people might be for the COVID-19 vaccine, but because, you know, now you're being enforced um, upon it. So it's kind of like, you know, you're maybe you're some, some of your freedoms, okay? You might feel like, well, hold on a second. You know what? I don't like the vaccine anymore. Okay, because I am being enforced into it, although I might support it otherwise. So you have to be careful how you, you know, pose your questions. Now, if the question was just about the government itself, you know, enforcing and nothing to do with the vaccine, much different. But if your interest is about COVID-19 vaccine and how many people, based on the information that, let's say, as objectively as you can, Okay, would provide you the pros and cons. Would you be able? To, would you take that vaccine or not? Okay, that's different. So this is another actually measurement um, bias. So you're you know you, you are stating the question. You're loading the question up with certain words that may make the individual um, uh, not think about actually the vaccine, but more so about in this case about the government enforcing it. Okay, so those are two kind of separate things. So as you can see, I mean, these are just a few examples in here um, that I gave you, but these biases certainly exist. And I think as a student, you should be aware that when you are looking at results, you know, you should take them with a little bit of grain of salt and you should always ask, hmm, what kind of sampling did they use? Maybe it was just by purely volunteer methods. Right? It's a poll on a newspaper site. You know, maybe that newspaper is hev heavily liberal, okay? or maybe that newspaper is heavily conservative. So the question they'll ask, they'll only include a certain group, and it's also volunteer basis. Not everybody will do it. So the sampling technique okay, is very much biased in those senses. And why? Well, because it's very easy right, to put up a poll on a website and then grab it. And pretty much, all the polls on websites are heavily biased. Okay, so that's something that you should think about. You know, even if you're into sports and you're looking at it, well, it's only tailored towards those people that visit that website. It's not actually a representation of the entire population. Now, some people don't care, but if you want true statistical data, you know, you want as much objectivity as possible. So, I hope that this gives you some kind of a sense and at least a, a thought process behind biases and some of the biases that, that come up, okay, and things that you should think about. All right, thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you in a future video. Bye, everybody.